Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps. Today we're going to play with a gel press and make our own custom pattern paper. If you've never seen a gel press, this is what this look they look like. This happens to be a 9 by 12 gel press plate that will fit an entire piece of 8.5 by 11 paper, which is why I got this ginormous gel plate. They come in many sizes and you can use all kinds of mediums on a gel press. And today I'm using the Atelier Ink on 3 ink in Bee Sting Yellow and Marigold Orange. I took, <clears throat> took those stamp pads and created uh, alternating strips of color just by pushing the ink pads gently onto the gel press. And I used my brayer to smooth those out a bit. And I just took a full sheet of 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock and pressed that down onto the gel press and that goes so quickly i think this is my new favorite way to create pattern backgrounds and you can see that there was still a little ink left on the brayer and i thought i'd see what it would look like on the back one of the other magical things about a gel press is that you get amazing crisp images every time you stamp it has just the right amount of give to help make all of these images be crisp and clear and beautiful. So I'm going to take this large floral bouquet from the First Blooms stamp set and I'm going to stamp it all over this background that I've already started with. It goes super quick and I didn't even clean the stamp between the colors. Now we're going to pull out the wide box card die set um, and this will make a slimline box card. I'm sh taking all of the pieces that I would die cut and laying them out so you know what you need. However, there are a couple of things I made extras of. The long thin strips, I did not need as many as I cut. I needed half of what I cut it. Cut, cut it, cut, hmm, new word. Um, half of what I cut out because I forgot that one of those panels is going to be covered with uh, on each side by the large rectangle. So I'm going to take each of the matching panels and glue those to the um, two pieces that form the box. I want all of the sides that are visible to be covered with something. And that's the magic of making your own pattern paper with a gel press. You need about a sheet and a half of eight and a half by 11 to create all of these pieces to cover a wide box card. And that's a little tough to do when you're working with six by six paper or um, if you are trying to get by with just a pre-printed pattern. Well, I shouldn't say get by. You're trying to use. I really love to create pattern paper, and maybe you do too. We have all of these supplies to make coordinating papers with our um, stamps and our dies and all of our things. So I've done one panel. Now we're going to take the other panel. This will be the back panel, and this happens to be the inside of the card. So I'm trying to decide what would look the best because you're only going to see the top half for the most part of this one on the inside and I've decided which spot I like the best. And I'm going to adhere that to the inside. Now this flap has a score line on it from the die but it's not going to fold and by having these large rectangles on each side of that panel it will make it so you don't so you're not tempted to try to fold it and it gives it some extra stability. Here you're seeing me uh, realize that I cut out too many of those <laughs> because I need this piece on the back. Now there's enough space on this to be able to write a personalized message or even add more embellishment and have still room for more message. There are two different rectangles that are small. One goes on the lower portion and it is a square and the flap that folds down above that section is narrower. There are the extra pieces that I had. That's enough to start another card if I wanted. 
Now I'm going to take and crease, fold and crease all of these score lines that are left in both directions because we want this box to open and close easily and smoothly. Even this little flap is going to get folded and scored on, in both directions. Now these are the pieces that will fold down to expose the inside of the box. And I'm just making sure to line up the score lines and the bottom edge of the box so that everything folds correctly and the score lines make this very easy. And we're going to glue this together on one side. And yes, it is going to overlap the pattern paper a little bit, but you're not going to see that. I do use some um, score tape and some glue. I want the wiggle room and the immediate hold. I want it all. We all do, don't we? <laughs> and this is the best of both worlds, using some dry adhesive and some wet adhesive at the same time. So you have a little wiggle room, but when um, you're ready for it to be stuck, it's stuck. Now these are the bridges. I made three of them, and I'm going to add a little bit of the score tape to the ends. And I'm also going to use wet glue. This happens to be Barely Arts, Preci uh, yes, Barely Arts Precision Glue. And I'm putting that on each side of the dry glue. And we're going to line this up with the top of the inside section on the side because we're going to um, build our bridges. So that's a back one. This one's the middle one. And we're keeping them all lined up with each other. And... Here is a front one. You don't have to put in three bridges. I tend to put in three bridges. I've done two. You can do one, however much you want to add to your card. So I have the dry adhesive on the other end of these also. So we're going to remove those and add some glue. Oh, and this is just how quick it is to unclog the end of your very fine tip of this glue. Um, so I just keep a needle in a stack of packing material on my desk. Now we just fold that other side panel over onto those bridge ends. And they're all lined up nice and even. While I'm holding pressure on that uh, flap so that it adheres well, or on that, that side panel, I add a little bit of adhesive to the joining flap, and that is the enclosed card. I do bend it back and forth a few times to get it a little loosened up. And now we're going to move on to the Celebration Border, Slimline Celebration Border die set, which has these wonderful words and the bubble cuts for them. I lined up all of the words for Happy Birthday to you, and I am using a piece of Inca Gold Tonic Mirror Card this is an iridescent gold. I love that it has a rainbow of colors. And then I'm taking some vellum strips that I've cut down and I'm going to cut out the bubble cuts. And that sounds really risky, doesn't it? Don't worry, I have a way to adhere these without having the glue show. I've cut out almost all of the bubble cuts. Here's the last bubble cut. If I'd used my big die cut machine, I could have cut all of this in one pass but that doesn't fit under my camera <laughs> so now we are going to take the letters from this uh, word birthday and i am using a reverse tweezers to get a good grip on each of the letters and putting a little bit of glue on the back before i adhere it to the vellum these are super easy to line up is not a, a difficult task at all. I, I wouldn't even call it tedious. I really enjoy uh, adhering these together. It just comes together so quickly and I don't have to worry about exact placement. They, the design of this allows for a little bit of wiggle room so you don't have to be worried about uh, complete concentration when you're adhering these to the bubble cut. And I love this font. It's very universal. You can use it for men, women, children, young, old. It's got that classical, 
classical. It's got that fits for everyone look to it. And I love that you don't have to hunt out and figure out how many of each you need. It's just the words are already formed and you can run them through all at once because we all need birthday cards. And it's Trinity's birthday this month. Three years. Yay for Trinity stamps. I am still loving everything they create. There is the Y in the birthday. I love that shimmer. Now I'm going to take some strips of packing material. It's just uh, like from the backing of a stamp set or outer packaging. Um, you can even use trimmings for from lamination. Or you can buy acetate sheets, or maybe you have some in your stash, and trim them into thin picks. And I put two on each of these words. I did some longer ones on the happy and the birthday, because I want those to be taller than the two you. And we're going to stagger those on the different bridges. We've got the happy, we've got the birthday. <clears throat> And those are just going on the furthest back bridge. There you go. I'm just making sure that they get stuck good. I'm amazed at how quickly that it uh, glue sticks. And I mean sticks. I, you're going to see how quickly it is here. I just tack those down to the front bridge on this. It kind of looks like I'm gluing to the front of the box, but I'm not. It's on a bridge. And look at that. Happy birthday to you. I had taken uh, several of the images, almost every single image from the first Blooms stamp set and uh, colored them, stamped them with uh, Copic Safe ink and colored them with Copics in just two greens, a yellow, an orange, and a brown to create these beautiful sunny flowers and I'm going to adhere them on the middle bridge to uh, fill out this box. We've got some extra leaves in a variety of shapes and sizes. And we've got a bloom with a bud. And we have just a single flower. And you can layer these in so many ways. And you could make this, <clears throat> this box even fuller. It just depends on how many flowers and blooms and leaves and butterflies you want to add to the inside of this card. Just one last little piece here. I'm going to add this butterfly. I think I'm going to stick it just to the double bloom bouquet. Like he's just landing on the blooms. And there is a box full of birthday blooms. I love it. I love that this paper coordinates with the images that we use to hide as the main component of the card. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in any, any of the products that were used in this video, check the description box below. There will be a list with links. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now. Here are a couple more videos we thought you might enjoy. And until next time, Bye-bye.